Scientists, do you ever get distracted when you're looking out your window and maybe you start daydreaming or you're watching the birds or you're watching the butterflies? Yeah, that happens to me too, so I think I better reverse my camera here and get to the real video. There you are. So, wondering about the injury on my finger? Don't worry, it's a gardening injury. It'll get better. All daydreaming aside, have you ever sat and wondered what the greenhouse effect is anyway? Well, today we're going to try to make a model of the greenhouse effect, and in fact we're going to do two versions of it. So, let's jump in there. Hi again, scientists. When we build our model to show the greenhouse effect, these are the supplies that you're going to need. You have to have two containers, preferably that you can see through. They don't have to be the size or this shape, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. And you're going to need some plastic wrap, and you will need to have a really sharp pencil or a skewer or a toothpick, something that's got a really pointy edge because we're gonna poke holes in the plastic wrap with it. And then in this version, we're going to use two rubber bands and two thermometers. Now, I didn't think that you would necessarily have thermometers at home, so if you don't, don't worry about it because I'm going to show you another way that we can build a model of the greenhouse effect. So in the second step, what I did is I took two pieces of my plastic wrap and I put it over the tops of the containers and tried to get it pretty tight and then if you can see on the side I put a rubber band around it to hold it in place and then stretched it and pulled it kind of like when you're making your bed in the morning you want to get the tops nice and tight and I also noted the temperature let me zoom in a little bit so 64 degrees Fahrenheit on the first one and again 64 degrees on the second container, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my toothpick or your skewer or your super sharp pencil, and in the second one, I'm going to poke some holes in the top of it. Okay, here we go. It's the fun part. Dun, 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 dun. So you wanna poke some holes. I wanted to show you that when I poked holes in the top of the second container with the plastic wrap, I really made a lot of them. And I'm thinking that you probably want to use a pencil. Now the starting temperature on both of them was 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, the one on the left has the plastic wrap with no holes in it, and the one on the right does have holes in it. So I'm going to leave these for about five minutes and we'll come back and check the temperature. What do you think we're going to find out here, scientists? Well, on the way, I thought we should stop and smell the roses. We should always stop and smell the roses. Ha ha ha. Okay, I'm going to walk over to where I left them in the sun and zoom in on the temperature. What are you thinking in your head? You've got one without holes and one with holes. Let's take a look at these two temperatures. There we go, the one on the left with no holes. And moving over to the one on the right, which does have holes. I noted the temperature difference, okay? So in about eight minutes, the one on the left, which was covered with plastic, no holes, went from 64 degrees to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And the model on the right went from 64 degrees to 88 degrees. Now, both of them definitely got warmer, but which one do you think is a better model of the greenhouse gas effect in terms of pollution accumulating in the atmosphere? I want you to think about that, scientists, and we'll do a review in the next segment. In the second version, I'm still going to use the same containers, and in fact, I even saved my plastic wrap. I think I can get it back on with a rubber band. But this time I'm not going to use thermometers. Remember I said I wasn't sure that you guys would have thermometers at home. So as a substitute, I colored some water and made some giant round ice cubes. 
And what I'm going to do is put one in each of the containers and wrap it back up. Remember, one has holes in the plastic wrap and one does not. And then I'm going to bring them back out into the sun and I want you to be thinking and making a prediction. Which one do you think will melt faster? The one in the container that has holes in the plastic or the one in the container that does not have holes? Scientists, this is kind of interesting. Yesterday when I was making the colored water for the ice cubes, I am quite sure that I mixed the green food coloring in with the water, but look how it froze. I'm going to zoom in. See how the color seemed to have concentrated in on the middle? I'm going to show you this one too. Isn't that interesting? I'm thinking as a side experiment, you should try it if you have food coloring. I just used a little plastic container. Ooh, it looks even more interesting from the side. Anyway, I'm quite sure that I mixed the color in. Why don't you try it? Mix some food coloring into water and see what happens when you freeze it. Okay, I have some hot water in a bowl and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bottom of each of the containers down in some hot water so that I can release it since this isn't really an ice cube tray. So let me get that set up. Can you see the steam coming off my bowl of hot water? I think that's going to help release my ice cubes from their containers. Let's give it a try. I'm just going to leave it in there for a few seconds just to melt a little bit of the edges on both of them. And then I'm going to put them into the containers and put the plastic wrap on really quickly and run them out into the sun. Oh yes, scientists, that worked really well. Look at this. When I pick it up and squeeze it, it comes out. really easily. Here's the other one in the bowl. I'm starting to think that I need a film crew. Isn't that awesome? Okay, so now I'm going to put them into the containers and get them out into the sun. So there they are, back in their containers with the plastic wrap over them. And you know what I just realized, boys and girls? Happy Earth Day! I think it's kind of cool that we're doing greenhouse gases and talking about the greenhouse effect on Earth Day because we have to protect planet Earth. Okay, I've got to get these outside before they melt. Which one are you predicting is going to melt fastest? The one on the left with no holes or the one on the right with holes? Think, think, think. Okay, scientists, it's been about five minutes. Let's see what's happening in here. Ooh, right before I turned my camera on, I could see the one on the left starting to move. If you could imagine that like a glacier, when the glaciers melt, they move along too. And think about the earth that they carve on their way. I am thinking, well, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking. I'm going to let you think, and I'm going to leave these for another five minutes and come back out. Scientists, what do you think? Take a careful look. Compare the melting been about five more minutes. I think I might wait a few more minutes too just to see if we can make it even more dramatic but is your production correct? So I'm zooming in upside down right now so that we can check out the level of meltage. What do you think? Oh. Hard to tell. I'm gonna let it keep going. Scientists! Here's an interesting thing. When I went outside to check on the two containers with the melting ice cubes, it was really hard to tell the difference in the melting rate, and that is not what I expected. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I did anything wrong. Here's another question I have for you. Which one of those models do you think was the best representation of the atmosphere on Earth with greenhouse gas pollution? Do you think it was the one with plastic wrap, no holes, or the one with plastic wrap that we poked holes in? Which one would be a better representation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere trapping the heat around planet Earth? I can't wait to hear what you're thinking, scientists, and good luck doing this experiment. Either way you do it, I expect a full report. See you next time. Okay, scientists, thanks for watching. Did you enjoy that lesson? Subscribe below to see more fun science videos. 
You can also become a member of PS Science on Patreon to support what we're doing. See you next time.